Brooke Warner, and I am here with Linda Joy Myers. Hi, Linda Joy. Hi, Brooke. Great to be here with you and all of you. Yeah, and we're talking about the evolution of memoir today because we are teaching a class this March called The Evolution of Memoir, and we've been teaching memoir together for 13 years, and we've largely focused on what I would call the traditional aspects of memoir, craft, narration, scene building, all of these things that matter, of course, to memoirists to figure out what they need to know to tell the best story that they can tell. And then in the last couple of years, we've been reading a lot of memoirs that seem to be tackling memoir in new ways. And so that's what we wanted to celebrate with this class, The Evolution of Memoir. And I wondered if you could talk about you know, building upon these traditional building blocks and craft elements that we have. And what are some of the things that we are actually seeing that made us want to teach the evolution of memoir? Yeah, well, we're seeing um, a lot of interesting things in uh, books like Bluets by Maggie Nelson and In the Dream House. There's some other books that were that inspired us to do this teaching. And, and it seems to be about, you know, um, really breaking apart form. There might be poetic language, different ways that the narrator comes in and tells the story, different points of view, using the you and we and they and not just I, you know, things like that. And it's just really interesting to see how you take in the story differently using these different techniques. Absolutely. And we actually have chosen six books for this class that we thought embody these poetic, different forms, taking risks. Uh, Linda Joy just mentioned Bluettes by Maggie Nelson in the Gr Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. We also chose Breathe by Imani Perry. You Could Make This Place Beautiful by Maggie Smith. On Earth, We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. And What Comes Next and How to Like It by Abigail Thomas. And we chose those six books. It is a reading list. You certainly don't have to read every single book on the list to benefit from the class, nor do you have to read from cover to cover to see what these wonderful memoirists are doing with the craft. But Linda Joy, I thought it would be a valuable exercise since we're telling people about this class that we're teaching to go through the four weeks that we're going to be presenting and just say a word about what is at the essence of each of these four weeks of as we've devised this class. So first we have elevating the form. And you mentioned that a bit just now with regard to point of view and the you voice, but there's also structure. I mean, I, I feel like what I'm seeing lately is that the fragmented form seems to be more popular than the linear form, except maybe for people who are writing coming of age. Yeah, well, you know, it's kind of an era that we're in also where people are used to sharing short things, uh, reading short things. People are sometimes preferring uh the, the 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 snippet or the kind of the essence of something in in kind of a poetic form and i noticed that you know in some of these books where i'm drawn in quickly uh i don't have to get there i, I mean <laughs> suddenly i'm in this world with somebody and all of them do it a little bit differently but i find that it's a, sort of an immediate here 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 i have something to say listen to me, do you relate to what I'm saying and feeling? You know, that's how the, it feels to me. And I think people are boiling it down to the essence a little bit more. I think that we're seeing more poeticism and therefore we're seeing people enter into form in different ways. There's experimentation, uh, there's vignettes, there's short scenes, there's one line on a single page. There's right. so many things that we're going to be exploring in terms of showing how these authors in particular that we've chosen for the list, but it goes beyond that. Uh, so we're mainly excited just to show this. And for people who have written traditional structures or published traditional structures, that's wonderful. They're always going to continue to be around. And I think we want to make this point as we're talking about elevating the form that when we were talking earlier, there was this idea of like becoming a maestro kind of, right? This thing that like you have to have the baseline and really know what you're doing in order to start to break the rules and bend things. And so that's another piece that I think is exciting about this class and, and just gives people maybe some additional knowledge and information for, for their current projects or their future projects. Well, the challenge in memoir is, is uh, for most of us, is writing a story that's true and ours 
and also one that brings in the reader. What's their experience? And there's a universality, uh, you know, that we ultimately need to really try to reach in, in writing memoir. And so in like, we're going to be talking about breaking the time space continuum and seeing how these writers don't lose the reader. I mean, we're going in and out of time. We're here, we're there. Um, but I don't feel that I'm being lost or dropped, you, you know? And so learning the traditional first allows you to think, you know, okay, I know what the reader needs to get from me, but how can I do it in a new way? And get right. <laughs> And when we talk about things like new and evolving techniques, and that might be the use of the second person, or it might be different points of view. Certainly we're seeing a lot of authors enter into other people's points of view. We've taught that for a long time, but you have to have such deep control. You can't just all of a sudden do that or jump in and jump out. Cause I see a lot of people experimenting. And when I say people, I mean, our students experimenting and doing interesting things, but because of not really having the guardrails, sometimes you feel a little like you're in a fast moving car and it's careening down the highway with no brakes and you want to have that feeling that you're safe inside someone's story who is experimenting and doing something cool so I will say that that foundational piece is key and then you're building upon that and Abigail Thomas is a perfect example oh. of someone who I just think breaks the rules all over the place but she's in command of breaking those rules you can feel it too in reading I love I love her book uh, and we love all the books, actually. But Abigail, in particular, what comes next and how to like it, uh, you, you know, you feel like you're across from her and she's telling you a story. And then she goes to that story and she goes to this other one and then she's talking about painting. I'm like, oh, OK, great. I'll go with you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, all of these writers, you'll go anywhere with them. And that's the goal that the writers in our courses, of course, want. And so finally, before we conclude here, we're talking to uh, about the meaning below the meaning below the meaning. And I think every one of these books that we've chosen, but plenty more, excavating meaning is really central to what you and I have been teaching for 13 years. I mean, without meaning, your memoir is your journal. You know, without meaning, your memoir is a letter home. And so this is something that we always are trying to get people to look at. And I think that this, to me, it's the most important thing that writers need to harness. And you have to know scene and you have to know narration and you have to know what your themes are. You have to have all holding all of these things before you can even really get to the meaning in the first place. And a lot of people, when they're first starting out, they, they, they're not they're not sure what the meaning is, you know, they need to like lay that scene in there and get the dialogue going or get the theme going, whatever it is, and uh, learn how to excavate from within, you know, also to find the meaning. Also, many people have been silenced all their life and they're not sure they really have permission to explore what the meaning is. And so what's wonderful about all these books, I mean, you know what the meaning is, you know, it's delivered in different ways. Uh, structurally and with language, um, but you can feel it. Yeah, and we'll be talking about what the meaning is in each of these books that we've chosen and other books as well, how to hold that meaning while you're telling a story, how to come back to the meaning, you know, how to touch upon the meaning in small, subtle ways so that there's this cohesive experience. And that's really what memory is. You know, we talk about moving beyond what happened and yeah. into why does it matter? And so I'm excited about this. I mean, we want to be clear for all of you who have taken previous classes from us that this foundation stuff is not changing. The genre of memoir is not breaking open or, you know, completely changing. It's becoming, I think, bigger. I think it's becoming, uh, you know, like for if you think about that memoir is a relatively new genre compared to fiction, I think what's happening is just more voices are coming in and lending different levels of expertise. And so it's giving us more permission. I was uh, seeing the metaphor of how language evolves in every culture. Mm. Every year there's new books, a new uh, words uh, added to the Oxford uh, Dictionary, you know, and so with memoir, we're, we're talking about new ideas and new expressions, um, but the language is, here is my story and will you join me and, and, and how does it make you feel? 
Yeah. And I think people who take our classes who have been, especially those who've been working on their books for a long time, or might already have a draft or part of a draft, they know they want to do something special mm -hmm. and they know they have one shot, you know, maybe they're going to write another memoir, but that's going to be years from now. Right. And so I think what we're trying to touch upon here is this idea that like, if you have one shot and you have some opportunity to do something beautiful, to do something not necessarily different, but just part of the zeitgeist that is happening right now, then learn it, figure it out, see what you can uh, implement, but it's also about infusing new life and energy into your writing. And I hope that's always what we're doing, Linda Joy, when we teach our classes, because I know we get so jazzed about it and uh, it's inspiring to the writers in the class as well. well we love memoir. Uh, we're really uh, carrying, um, you know, with love, the whole topic and genre of memoir, each, each of us and each in our own way and together. So um, yes, I really look forward to teaching this class with you. Me too. So everyone, please consider joining us. We would love to have you. It starts March 4th. It's a four week class. There's an add on afterwards for those of you who want to stay around and learn more about four of these books on our list. We invite you to check out magicofmemoir.com. Hang out with us in March and April this spring. Learn about the evolution. As we said, Linda Joy, earlier, uh, this idea of like, join the party, right? Come, mm -hmm. come see what's going on and see how it might improve and better your own craft. Mm -hmm.